In this video, we're going to look at several uh, things that we need to know uh, when going to and, and using uh, the ACI shear provisions. Uh, specifically, we're going to look at uh, what is D. So we see uh, BW times D. So what is this D value? Uh, we're also going to look at what BW is and what AV is. And then finally, we're going to look at what is uh, the critical section. Um, so what section do we need to find? VU uh, such that our uh, VV, VN is greater than VU. So where is our critical section? So first we're going to look at uh, what is D. Uh, so to do this we'll use a, a fixed fixed beam um, example. So for a, a fixed fixed beam our moment diagram we're going to have a negative moment at the ends positive moment at mid-span and a negative moment at the other end. Uh, so our D is going to be dependent on what section we look at along the beam. So if we look at our negative moment region, our top steel is in tension. So in our negative moment region, we'll have our D being the distance from our compression face, which is on the bottom in this case, to the centroid of our tension steel. So this would be our D in section 1. If we move and look at section 2, however, our top of the section is going to be in compression in this instance. And so we go from the compression face to the centroid of our tension steel. And this will be our D in section 2. So if we were looking for our, our shear capacity at section 1, we would need to use our D1. If we were looking at our shear capacity at section 2, we would need to use our D2. Uh, so we also might have multiple layers of steel. And the D for our, our, our shear strength cal calculations is going to be to the centroid of our tension steel. So if we have uh, two layers of equal number of bars, then D is to the centroid of, of uh, those two layers of bars. Next, we're going to look at uh, what our BW is. Uh, so we may have several different section types um, that we'll look at. So it's not always as simple as a, uh, just a rectangular section. So we need to look at what the shear stress distribution is across the section depth. So in a rectangular beam, uh, we'll have a, a parabolic shear stress distribution. Uh, this will be similar but a, a little different uh, depending on um, some of the other sections that we may have. Uh, but what we'll notice is that our maximum shear stress is going to be at the um, centroid of the section. Uh, so what we can do to figure out what our BW is, is just draw a straight line across uh, the, the mid-height or uh, centroid of our section, and then look at what, width, what the width of our section is at that height. So in our rectangular section, we'll have a BW equal to just the width of our section. If we have a double T section with uh, a, diff um, a, a different height at the top and bottom of our, our web, we can take uh, the mid height of that, and our BW would be equal to um, both of these web components combined. In an I section, we'll just have our BW equal to our, our web width here in the at the centroid of the section. And in a box section, we'll, our BW will be equal to uh, the sum of, of the two outside legs of our box. So that's how we find uh, our BW of, of different sections. We also need to be able to find the uh, area of our shear reinforcement um, to, th that'll contribute to the, the shear strength of our section. Um, so we can do the same thing. We can draw a line across the centroid, and we can see how many legs of steel are crossing our line. So in our uh, rectangular section, as shown, we have two legs of reinforcement. So our AV would be equal to 2 times the area of uh, whatever bar we have. So if we had a number 4 bar, it would be 2 times the area of our number 4 bar. 
Uh, in our double T section, we also have two legs uh, as it's drawn. Um, in our I section, as drawn, we would also have two legs. And in our, in our box section, as drawn, we would also have two legs. Uh, so, you know, you may have different uh, reinforcement configurations, but uh, drawing a line across the mid-height of the cross-section and seeing how many legs cross that line uh, will help you determine how many legs to consider in the uh, uh, shear, shear strength uh, of your section. Finally, I want to make a note on the critical section. Uh, so if we have a simply supported beam, uh, resting on bearing pads with some kind of length. So these are uh, bearing pads um, with a distributed load. Our shear diagram will go up at the centroid of our reaction. It'll go down with a slope equal to um, our distributed load and then back up at the centroid of our other uh, reaction. Uh, so what ACI allows you to do is to decrease the shear. So this is our actual. Um, so what we can do is we can go a distance D away from the face of the support. So D away from the face of the support on both sides. Oop. So away from the face, not the centroid. Um, and remember our D here for positive bending would be uh, from the compression face to the centroid of our tension steel. Uh, so then we can come down and find the V at, at that point, come down, draw that V, and then design our beam from, the, uh, from that point to the end of the beam using that uh, V. So let's just call that V critical. So V critical. Um, and the same thing on the other side. So we'll come down and it'll be equal because we're symmetrical. So V critical, V critical, and we'll come over and down. Um, so then we'll be just the same as our, uh, our normal diagram in, in between those values. Um, so when we're finding our shear, and uh, what shear to, to use for our, our VU. Um, if we're only designing our, our beam at one section, uh, this would be our critical section. So this would be our VU that we would design for. And uh, note that, that this uh, critical section can only be used uh, for normal loading scenarios where we don't have any concentrated loads uh, that are, are, clo are close to the support.